Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's me again Chelsea and today I'm bringing you another Vita 2 video and today we're going to be talking about some of my top audiobook recommendations that I'd like you to check out. So today I've got 10 audiobooks I just want to kind of chat through with you why I love them, why I think you should check them out and um, just, I don't know, give you guys some of the books that I really enjoyed. I'm not really going to tell you the ratings I gave these books because some of them I read them like last year and stuff. I don't want to have it like a full, full thing, like a full review of the book, but I want to tell you why I love this audiobook specifically. That is the plan. Right, okay. Let's just get on into it. So number one, The Ruin of Kings. If you didn't know, self-promo plug, I am one of the co-founders of It's All About Fantasy, which is a book club that me... Uh, Lisa from Lisa Does Life and the lovely Kate have started or have started when I'm filming this and we are currently in the process of reading the Chorus of Dragons series so now as you're watching this in the month of August we will be reading the third book which the name escapes me so I'm gonna have to quickly do a little search a because I can't keep up which is Memory of Souls and I have decided to listen to the whole series audibly so my first recommendation for you is The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons, which is the first book in the Cross of Dragons series. I really loved this audiobook and I feel like the reason I love this audiobook is because it is specifically told from two different points of view. One is our main character Kieran from a point in time of which he has chosen where it's probably a little while after his initial story started and the other is from someone called Talon who we learn more about as we go further on into the book. But this audiobook is narrated from a male point of view for Kieran and a female point of view for Talon and I feel like that made it really good to distinguish like whose part we were on, especially for an audiobook. I have a long commute so I often try, I try to pause at the end of chapters but it doesn't always happen, sometimes I get to my destination mid-chapter and being able to distinguish between voices kind of helps me ease back into the story faster than if it's all one narrator and trying to remember who's telling me what. Also because these two different perspectives are from two different times, like they're essentially they're essentially going to the same point but they start at different points so that really helped as well to kind of distinguish that for me. Being able to distinguish helps me connect with the characters and the world and everything else so much faster and I think that's why I absolutely love this audiobook and why I'm going to continue listening to it audibly. So that is my first recommendation for you. Recommendation number two, Ryan Carhill. This is the first book in his series. If you do buy it from Audible, I'm not sure where else you can buy audiobooks, but I got mine from audio uh, from Audible. If you do get it from Audible, at the end of it, you do get a copy of The Fall as well. So you can read that directly after you've read the first full book. The Fall is the first novella within this series. I think it would have been better if I'd have read that before I started the series to give me a bit of backstory but it does also work if you read it after the first book as well. I read it and it was fine. I love this audiobook because the narrator is fantastic. Actually do you know what? All of these audiobook narrators are fantastic. They're very good at what they do obviously but you know this is also a self-pubbed book so I would worry just in case but Ryan has picked the perfect person for this book. Their characterization for all the different characters for me was incredible. You could tell who was who. It really helped draw me in. It was also so good because I don't often get emotional at books but it did make me feel quite a few emotions just through listening to the book and that is bonkers. When someone can do that with their voice only, I think that's so impressive. So that is why I absolutely adored this audiobook. Then we've got another one that is also self-pubbed and that is Voice of War by Zach Argyle. Again, I believe this only has one narrator but their voice for all of the different characters is amazing. Like it, you can distinguish everyone so well, so easily so good like I, d I don't know how else to like give you that information like and the thing is the same audiobook narrator does the first and the second book and everything stays the same which is ugh, I don't understand how they do that that's like such an incredible feat personally I think 
and I feel like this narrator again really drew me into the story, it made me feel things which is nice and just really helped me bond with these characters and just kind of want to know more and, and learn more about the world and the story and he kept everything very engaging and I again it's that's just an amazing feat for me whose attention span does occasionally wonder if they're not you know preoccupied. The next two go together quite well. The first one is Becoming by Michelle Obama, which is also narrated by herself. And this is such a fantastic view into what it is like to be the first lady, and not only the first lady, but the first black lady in the White House. She has got such a different view on things than Barack Obama, which we'll talk about in a second, because obviously she was the one that didn't really want to go into politics and she had her own life and obviously they had kids and I loved, loved her audiobook. I really connected to her, I felt like her struggles and all the problems that she felt like she was overcoming. I love how positive she was on the outlook as well. Like this book was not like a drag my husband book, this book was here was what I was feeling but here is also like how I overcome it or how her and Barack just managed to get through it together and I just thought it was a great testament to their relationship as well which is fantastic and I love the personal side of it and that leads straight on into The Promised Land by Barack Obama also narrated by him. This is a lot chunkier I think than Becoming but he goes really in depth where where Michelle goes really into like her family life and how she was raised and how she met Barack Obama and, and raising her own children Barack does have a very focused view on obviously how he came into politics and how he grew up and all of those steps he took to becoming the president and I really like that because obviously he does mention Michelle and the girls and everything else like family wise as he goes but being on the other side and being able to see this same story and this same journey from the person whose journey it, it is, who's striving to be the president and someone who is going with them and supporting them. <sighs> Honestly, it's so good. Like, and they do, they do such a good job as well of just engaging with the reader. I have to say there were points in um, A Promised Land where my attention kind of drifted because he talks a lot about policies. Bearing in mind I am English, I have lived in America for a brief stint but I was young so all of these different policies and about Congress and all that stuff I didn't really pick up. It's also a completely different system to what we have here in the UK. It's just a little bit confusing but it's really informative as well. I loved hearing like how they do their presidential campaigns and those sorts of things, how they take like a year to do never even thought about it, never even thought like how much work goes into running a presidential campaign and how you have to like encourage people to vote for you and you've got to connect with them and all that fun stuff so both of these books together are fantastic and they are well worth a read and well worth a listen however you want to ingest the information but I absolutely love both of them. The next audiobook isn't really one that I loved the story for, but I just loved the casting. So for this one, it is The Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, or Northern Lights, is there a the? I, I never know. But this audiobook that I listened to specifically is narrated by Philip Pullman with a cast. So he does like all the descriptive stuff and then there's a full on cast. I think that is a really good idea and I did enjoy it. However, Lyra's voice is really annoying, but if you can get past that, like, the idea of the rest of it is pretty solid. Every character is voiced by a completely se separate actor or, like, an actor that makes it sound different. I'm not too sure. But it's so... It's good in that production element. Story I didn't really gel with, but I thought this one definitely needed a mention for the cast element because it just works really, really well. And they've picked pretty much perfect voices apart from Lyra which are really suited to the characters and keep you in the story for the whole thing. The next one I want to recommend to you is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. So I have listened to the first book. I thought it was great. I need to continue with the series, but I think I need to go back and re-listen to Red Rising because when I went in with um, Golden Sun, I think that's the sequel, I'd left it too long and I was completely lost as to where we were with the story. Again, another one that is narrated fantastically. 
within this world you have got reds who are like lower class and the golds are the upper class the voices this actor voice actor does are so good like he nailed how these people sound gold sounds so annoying and posh and he just nailed it he did such a good job i think it's just so good and i really like what he did with our main character whose name completely is D Dar darren not darren Darrow. Darrow is our main character. He did such a good job with Darrow's accent because obviously he starts off as a red and then the premise is that he's infiltrating the golds and he manages to like pick up the accent and but it's still it's still Darrow if that makes sense and it's very good it's very clever and it's definitely one that you should check out and I need to just carry on with that series or go back and re-listen and then start the series again because I need to know what happens with the rest of it I feel like I could ingest the story better now that I listen in longer periods of time than when I was listening to Red Rising because I, I wasn't really listening to it while driving. It's different when you listen to a book and drive than it is when you listen and do other things because if I'm around cleaning, I get very easily distracted and I'm no longer paying attention to what's going on in between my ears. Like, no idea, which is pretty normal to, for me. But that's just that's just me then we have the last wish by andrew sapagowski i'm really hoping i say that right which is the first lot of short stories in the witcher series again this narrator is great the only thing i have to yeah about is in the last wish dandelion is dandelion and then in the sequel he's dandelion like pick one name and stick to it <laughs> Why was that not picked up in production? Anyway, otherwise, fantastic. I found this audiobook to be gripping and entertaining and all of those marvellous, wonderful things that we look for in an audiobook because they need to be gripping, they need to be interesting. The voice actor needs to make them come to life and by gosh, this actor does. It's so good. So good. So definitely worth checking out. Two more. So number nine is The House of Earth and Blood. And now this one is a mention because there is a point within House of Earth and Blood where the line, I am not scared, my friends are with me, I think it's like that, comes into play. And never before has a book almost, like that book made me emotional anyways when I was reading it physically, let alone when I was listening to it. When you hear an, a voice actor being that character who has made you fall in love with them, doing that line, doing that scene. God, it made me feel things. So many things. And it made me a little bit emotional, gotta be honest. I didn't cry, but I almost did because you just, oh, it's so heart-wrenching. And it was heart-wrenching the first time anyways, but I just feel like the last hundred pages of that book, which are very pull on your heartstrings kind of things, are just made so much more with the voice actor. Don't know what she did. But she did it and it was amazing and I loved that. The sequel's a bit of a letdown, but the first book was great. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about today is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. So this book is following a whole heap of female characters. And again, this is kind of like a cast thing. Every character has got a different voice. I'm not sure how many our main narrator does. Maybe she does all of them. I don't know if she does. Genius. Um... But we, we've got like European accents and we've got English and we've got French and we've got Italian and we've got like posh English and all sorts of things. And they just make, especially the way this book is written. So the way this book is written is it's being written by a character and then every so often other characters chime in. And the only way to make it make sense is with this narrator, because my goodness, she does such a fantastic job of just making every character very, like, distinctive with how they talk. It was so good. I loved it. Really enjoyed it. It was so good. So there you have it. 10 audiobooks that I am recommending to you guys for a range of different reasons. Some of them I was actually like a little bit more in depth about why in the story ish and some of them i just said how amazing the audiobook narrator is but i mean that's also a reason to listen to them so if you like this video please give it a like really supposed to be on my channel leave me a comment down below of your favorite audiobook that you've listened to so i can check out some new audiobooks because i love listening to audiobooks at the minute 
it's basically the main way that I, I read books at the minute. And yes, audiobooks are still reading. Do not come for me with that. None of that. And if you just want to leave me an emoji, leave me any headphone kind of emoji. I don't know what's available, but I'm sure there's something. And if you want to see more of me, please consider subscribing and down below and ringing that notification bell to get notified every single time I upload new videos. I'm still uploading a video every day in the month of August, so make sure you stick around, ring that notification bell, come back, check out the playlist link down below for all of the past videos that I have uploaded. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. So um, I'm going to leave this here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Thanks for seeing me again and I'll see you again tomorrow for another video. Bye.